Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I think we might be live. Are we live? Hello, everybody. Welcome to another JCH Live. Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. Wherever you may be. Um, I know you're all over the world, which is really awesome. Love to hear from you. If you've joined us before, welcome back. Nice to see you again. I hope to see some familiar faces. It's always nice to hear from you. If you've never joined us before, welcome. This is your opportunity to ask me anything about cameras, about life, bikes, photography, um, anything really. Um, so, got a lot to talk about. There's been lots of cool stuff been going on in the film photography world over the last few days, last few weeks. Um, it's been quite exciting, really. So, um, I'd like to get into some of it, but I'd also like to hear from you what your questions are, where you're from, uh, what you're doing. Just uh, make sure you ask plenty of questions. And I will always be happy to reply. So let's have a, let's get into it as we do. Oh, by the way, check it out. Um, I'm wearing this lovely hat today. This is from my lovely friends at Downtown Camera in Toronto. If you haven't been there, or if you're in Toronto, or if you're in Canada, if you're in that part of Canada, you should definitely check them out. They are such lovely people. They've got great knowledge, great passion. Um, and if you are shopping online in the United States or North America, give them a look, check them out. They're lovely, lovely people. It's always good to help good people. So let's see, let's see. Uh, who we got, who we got? Um, <clears throat> good morning, good morning. There we have, I've got to go through it because there's loads. Nasir, Nasir is with us. Hey Nasir, welcome to see you again. Uh, it's always good to have familiar faces. What's up, I hope you're well. Um, hello from Maple Ridge, BC, Canada. Maple Ridge, I love that place, it sounds lovely. It just sounds so nice. Yay, Brazil, welcome, welcome. That's great, great. What's the best film camera to use to take pictures of my receipts for accounting? Um, probably a half frame, maybe. <laughs> or one that doesn't develop properly, perhaps. Um, I I'd say your iPhone. <laughs> Howdy from the Arizonian, an Arizonan. Arizonan? Arizonian? Arizonan? Um, uh, exploring Seattle. Cool man. Hey, what's up, John? That's John Duprat. It's always good to see you. Camera. <laughs> Legally, you're not allowed to answer my most pressing question. Legally? Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you can try, and I'll do my best to skirt around the issue. How's Japan with airport hand check film request? That's actually a very good question. My experience is that Japan has always been very good and very understanding. Um, I usually take my film in a Ziploc bag or in my film cases, like this, in a Ziploc bag, so it gives them uh, real easy access to the films. And if you ask, they, I've never had them refuse, never once. I have had uh, airports in the UK refuse, um, and I've heard that Paris also refuses and insists that film goes through uh, uh, CT scanners now, which is real nice, thanks a bunch. So yeah, um, but Japan will always be good. Uh, you just have to be aware of how it's gonna be on the way back. So, question. I have a Minolta Hymatic. Do you think it's worth getting a Hymatic 7S? Do you think it's worth getting a Hymatic 9? I mean, they're not terribly expensive, so yeah, why not? Give it a go. A um, little bit different, but not all that much. It'd be very familiar if you've already used the Hymatic 7, so it's not gonna cost you a ton of money. Um, thoughts on external viewfinders on Leica rangefinders? Well, they have an important place, uh, particularly for wider lenses, because there are no frame lines. So I think that very much, you know, for example, okay, this isn't a Leica, this is a Mamiya 7, but this Mamiya 7 in particular has got this absolutely lovely 43 millimeter lens on it. And if you want to be able to compose, you need to use the finder. There is no way of getting out of it, basically. So um, yeah, they do have a purpose uh, and it can be very useful. Right, um, <clears throat> I'll be traveling to Tokyo, Osaka and Kyoto in two weeks. Any recommended camera stores that are an absolute cannot miss? Both analog and digital Leica. I mean, tons. There's, there's so many, I can't answer that question for you here um, go check out my site there is a uh, guide to the stores in Tokyo which has so many and that's not even all of them there's also um, Phil but Ono Phil Ono's website and he covers uh, the camera stores in Kansai 
so Osaka, Kyoto, that sort of places as well. So he's got some good information on those. Really helpful resources, um, both mine and his, and you can find plenty of stuff. Plenty of stuff. Uh, Tokyo, in Shinjuku alone, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight big camera stores, I think, you know, that, or enough, big enough camera stores. So yeah, um, plenty. Hello from Puerto Rico. What's up, Puerto Rico? It's always nice to see you. My film is sold in Puerto Rico in a surf shop. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, I'm, I'm sick about that. that. That's pretty awesome. I had a shop in Korea and they insist on opening my eight by 10, I had stop in Korea, sorry. And they insist on opening my eight to 10 film boxes. Eight by 10, oh my God. That stuff is expensive. Like legitimately expensive. That's insane. Some of these companies, uh, so companies, sorry, some of these airports um, are run by jumped up pricks. Korea, um, yeah, the airport Incheon in Korea, they were at, they made me put my camera, which had film in it, they made me put my camera through uh, the x ray three times, three times, because they just did not believe that it was a film camera. They were awful. And then when I got on to the, got to the gate to get to the plane, they said, oh, by the way, there's another security scan me Are you kidding me um hello from sweet home alabama oh good to hear from you hey from vietnam awesome vietnam as well we've got the whole crew in the house this is brilliant i'm really happy about this look at that this viewfinder needs a bit of a clean i'm gonna have to give that a bit of a squiz later on um with my lovely cleaning kit Hey, from Vietnam. Uh, thoughts on Sigma FP for budget one man filmmaking? Don't know. I don't know anything about digital cameras. Like nothing. I don't even know how much they cost. I was in um, a Leica boutique yesterday and I saw the digital cameras and it blew me away how much money they were. I could not get my head around it. I mean, Sure, great cameras, but yeah, afraid I can't really answer that one. I don't really know anything about uh, film cameras. Yeah, I'm one of these guys. One of these guys. I'm. Uh, I don't know anything about film cameras. Freudian slip. Maybe I don't. <gasps> Kruger Dunning effect. Oh no. Oh no. No, I do know a little bit about film cameras. Uh, I don't know anything about digital cameras. But uh, I'm. I'm into this sort of stuff. These sort of things, beautiful, beautiful film cameras. So uh, yeah, I'm afraid I can't really help you that much on that one. Um, which reminds me, we have got some absolutely stunning cameras available for sale on the site now, including this Ishiki uh, T981, the Yasahara screw mount, range finder, brilliant little thing. Uh, original black paint Canon P with a black paint lens. Look Flipping gorgeous. Um, yeah, loads more. I'll show you a bit more later on, but I need to answer some more questions for you. So, hello from Indonesia. Hey, what's up, Indonesia? What part of Indonesia? I absolutely love Indonesia. I spent several months traveling around there, really enjoyed it. I've been pretty much top to bottom. Um, hello from Raleigh, North Carolina. What's up? Hope you're well. Hope you're safe over there. Uh, what are good camera shops in Japan to visit? All of them, they're all good. Um, well, some of them better than others, but I don't think there's any really shit ones. Um, but yeah, there's loads to visit, tons and tons. Just check out my site, have a look at the guide to Tokyo and go from there. Um, you can always, always find a camera shop in, <laughs> in Japan. Hi from Rennes, France. Way, hey, what's up, bonjour. Uh, Nasir, I'm looking for a 645 camera. What do you recommend? Pentax 645. Yeah, very good. Pentax 645 N or N2. Um, Mamiya 645. Uh, I prefer the Pentax a little bit, actually, because I prefer the Pentax lenses. Um, I think they have a nicer feel to them. So, yeah, Pentax would be for me. Otherwise, you could get one with perhaps one of the Fuji 645s but they're less reliable, um, so, but have a look at Pentax, I don't think you'll be disappointed, so. Uh, the Den Show, I'd like to have a stop in Japan, but concerned about how the Narita uh, or Japan International Airport deals with films when asked for a handshake. Dennis, 
Hey Dennis, um, don't worry about Japan. Worry about other places. Japan will hand check your film if you ask them. I have never been refused on this, not once, not ever. And I have been through both Narita, Haneda airports more times than I can count. And I've never once been made to uh, scan my film. So don't worry about that. Hi Peru, hi, uh, hi from Peru, I guess hi from Peru. Hey from Toronto, hey Charlie. These guys are from Toronto, these guys. They're really nice. Downtown camera, lovely people. Um, and lastly, what's your experience of X-ray CT scans when traveling to and from Japan with a high-speed film? Um, I've never been CT scanned yet, uh, but that's a relatively new thing and I haven't done much traveling since COVID. Uh, prior to that, Japan was never an issue. I could always get hand-checked, but I would have trouble in Korea. I would have trouble in uh, Indonesia. Um, they would always insist on putting stuff through an x-ray. That was really disappointing. Um, England, where I, they get really angry and they threaten you. And I, which is wild because, you know, being a British citizen, I was threatened with not being allowed to enter the country of my birth unless I scanned my film, which pretty much I'm sure is illegal. But um, yeah, some places will be dickish about it unfortunately. Um, so just try and limit the damage as much as possible. Um, so thoughts on half frame, right? I was going to get to that. Thoughts on half frame being Pentax's first go. I see a lot of people angry, but I don't mind your thoughts. I was going to get to this. So this is something I really wanted to talk about. The new Pentax half frame, which was announced last week. Japan, and it was announced in Japan by a YouTube post at 10 o'clock in the morning, which screams of not having a media team at all. Uh, Pentax media team aren't very good at what they do. Um, unfortunately, well, maybe they are, maybe they're like playing 3D chess or something. Uh, but uh, their focus has been on Japan, really. Their main focus is Japan. It's not going to be the Western market initially. Now, I know from good sources that this camera is part of a roadmap, okay? So the first camera is a half frame. They do have to test the market. They have to test the market to see if this is actually viable. And this is an expensive project to take on. I think a lot of people fail to understand that maybe Pentax Rico is a big company, but it's still a very expensive thing to do. Research and development and, and all of that takes a long time and a lot of money. Now, they did a questionnaire in Japan that focused on mainly young people to find out what they want from a camera. And they found that a lot of young people use smartphones and so they needed something that was gonna be familiar for young people. Now, they're aiming this camera at a new generation of film shooters, which is really important. People must understand that this is a really important thing. The new generation of film shooters is the next generation of film shooters, which is gonna help the community, the industry hugely. If this camera is a success, which I think it will be, it's going to be a huge success, then, and then they are going to release another camera. Now, first half frame camera, I think it'd be a lot of fun. I'll buy one. It saves you money on film. Um, it's shooting a different format. Half frame is a lot of fun to shoot anyway. Um, and it will be interesting to see how the camera is priced and how the camera is made, because I think they they know that it's going to go for young people so they can't make it really expensive it's not going to be a thousand dollar camera but it's also not going to be a cheap piece of, piece of plastic crap which some people have said it's just going to be one of those kodak ektars or whatever the hell they are no it's not it's actually going to be a proper camera with a proper lens with an autofocus uh, sorry not an autofocus with a zone focus on it you know with auto exposure and things it's going to be an interesting camera and it is going to be followed by a full frame 35 millimeter compact camera. This is on the roadmap. And when that camera is successful, and I can almost guarantee it will be, that will be followed by an SLR, right? So Pentax is taking this very seriously. And not only are they taking it very seriously, but they are also pushing for other companies to take it seriously too, and actually start producing film cameras as well. So I think this is a great thing. There's my thoughts on that. Um, <laughs> sorry for the rant and ramble, but no, I really think this is important. And I think that the naysayers, and there were a lot of them, were being just 
you know, beardy, gatekeeping bullshit. The camera isn't designed for you. If you haven't got anything nice to say, just jog on, go away, you know? Let the new generation try it out instead of, you know, trying to, you know, deride them or something. It's, it's sad and it shows how bitter you are, you know? So, hand check Takamas to get on the naughty list challenge. <laughs> yeah, I'll get you put on an ad. <laughs> I'll get put you on a uh, international watch list. Oh my God. Korea wanted to open my eight by 10 and will never fly Korean Air ever again. I will never fly Korean Air ever again, and I will never fly Asiana ever again, but that's for entirely different reasons. But yes, their security is absolute bullshit, and uh, they do not have the first understanding or care of what you've got. So, does bulk rolling film really save more money or not so much anymore? No, it, it does. It really does. Especially when you see the prices of film now. Okay, it's more expensive than it used to be, but you can still you know, bulk roll of like $3 rolls of film, you know, or $4, which you can't buy a $3 roll of film. So yeah. Hello from San Diego, California. What's up? Hope you're doing well. I like it down there. Hello from Hawaii. Yay. Love you, Hawaii. Hawaii is awesome. I've got so many good friends there. I miss it so much. Is there a film you haven't tried that you would be happy to try? I've tried pretty much all of them. <laughs> um, actually, no, that's a good point. Uh, it leads, leads me on to one thing, and that's the new Ferrania P33. Haven't tried that yet. Um, and I'm excited to try it. Ferrania said they're gonna send me some, but they haven't done it yet, so I'm still waiting for that. But yes, um, <clears throat> P33, I would like to try that one. I'm um, looking forward to that. And I'm also looking forward to seeing some of the other offerings from other companies. Hopefully we're going to see another color film from another company soon so that could be very interesting hello jch planning to sell my wide and tele lens because my yashikama 124g winding is stuck sorry to hear that you can get it repaired mark hammer is still doing yashika in the us i believe so it, it would be worth getting repaired the 124g is a great camera um if you can get it repaired definitely give it a try um, Fuji slide film availability in Japan. Can't find it anywhere here in North America. There was a bit about yesterday. I went out, uh, I did a tour of Tokyo yesterday with a client and I saw Provia 100, uh, Velvia 100 with Velvia 50 on the shelf. Um, and that was it. That's all I could find. Unless you were buying uh, sheets. Um, and then you could, there was a, bigger range but they're big and very expensive um yeah there was 135 and 120 as well which was pretty cool um but not enough it kind of sucks so andy camped here if you're at heathrow terminal 2 and you go to the scanners all the way on the right side they're actually required to hand check every film not the same story when it comes to the scanners scanners on the left side that is a handy tip thanks very much next time i have to go through heathrow ugh. I will, um, yeah, I will make sure I check that out and skid on over to the, uh, to the right hand side and see if I can get my film hand checked because last time I got stuck with a po face wanker who um, threatened me um, and said he had every right to give me a slap. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, America, England is an amazing place. You give somebody a badge and that's it. They think they are God and master of all. Um, is it easy to find next pan in Japan? No, no, it's not because they were never sold here. You can find a TX1 in Japan, which is the same camera, but not the same color, but you will have a hard time finding an X pan um, unless it's been imported. Uh, let's see, it's been a while since I traveled to Japan. I wonder what the Japanese people think of tourists. I'm from Hong Kong. Can Japanese distinguish between people from China and Hong Kong? Unfortunately not, not really. Um, at the moment, it's funny. So when the tourists first weren't here um, during COVID, when the, the first lockdown, it seemed like everybody was pretty happy. It was like, because the, the tourism had become untenable. There was a lot of tourists. And then they realized, you know, oh God, it's really damaging our economy. We're all broke, you know. So when the tourists came back, they welcomed them with open arms, you know, come, come, come. Um, but then they started flooding in. It was just like the floodgates were opened and they poured in. 
And now, again, the Japanese uh, are getting a little bit upset because not, and this isn't any specific country, but there is a lot of uh, rude foreigners who spit, who smoke anywhere they feel like, who play their music on the train, who eat on the street and then just drop their ra rubbish on the floor, you know. So they're having to put up signs in a lot of places saying, please do not eat on the street, please do not smoke in the street. You know, they're having to have patrols and stuff. And Japanese people don't really see it as uh, a Chinese people thing or a Hong Kong, they don't differentiate. They just see it as a, they're all Asians and they're all tourists. They're all white and they're all tourists. They're all probably from America. There's no real differentiation. I mean, I'm making a fairly broad generalization there, but that seems to be the case. Uh, but as long as you just behave and have manners and, you know, learn a few Japanese words. I was here with a chap the other day and he didn't speak a word of Japanese. It was his first time in Japan, but he tried. He tried with the Ohio Gozaimasu and he tried with the Konnichiwa and Arigato and people loved him for it. So it's just a case of being polite, having some good, good manners, you know, just using common sense and you'll be fine, you'll be fine. Anyway, of finding a Mami a 43 finder by itself. What you mean, like this one? <laughs> no, you can't have it, sorry. Um, I have a lens that didn't come with a finder. Yeah, they are really hard to find on their own. No pun intended. <laughs> they are actually pretty hard to locate. Um, yeah, you can have a, uh, it's gonna be a long time searching for one of those, I think, sorry. <clears throat> How rare is it for Mamiya 7 electronics to fail? Not that rare unless you dunk them in water, which I have seen. I have seen, oh yes, I've seen one that was filled with seawater and sand. Um, so the, the Mamiya 7 itself is getting older. Um, so the, there is more chance of the electronics failing. The Mamiya 7 II is not quite as old and I can still have these repaired as well. Um, so less chance with one of these. Um, but you still have to be aware, you're talking about a 20 something plus year old camera. So yeah, these things can happen. You know, you've got to be aware of that. Let's see, let's see. Are Leica cheaper in Japan than in the States? Absolutely not. Oh no, they're not. In fact, they're more expensive here than they are in the States. I'd say about 15% premium for the new stuff um for the old stuff no it's fairly similar pricing wise but the quality is a lot higher but for the new stuff pfft, no way too expensive can't deal recommendation best wide angle lens for the f3 hmm. good question hmm so um i'm not a huge wide angle lens fan um but the 18 and the 20 uh, millimeter lens is very good. If you want to get wider than that, you're starting to get into fisheye territory. Um, so I'd recommend maybe even a 24 is, and the, the 28 are brilliant, but the 24 is also a very good lens. So. Can we have a 10th anniversary run of Street Pan with the original packaging and film canisters? I love the new designs, but the only ones, yeah, I, I totally wish, you know, um, but unfortunately, no. They, because they have to produce the uh, packaging in such huge quantities, you can't do a, a minimum order of it. It has to be like 50,000 printed at a time. So yeah, I just can't do that, unfortunately. Hey, from Shibuya, what's up? Hope you're doing well. Uh, that's just down the road. <laughs> um, have you seen the new Pentax film camera prototype? I haven't, um, but I have been asking and I know people who have, and I know people have used it, and I know people have shot with it, but I haven't seen it in person. Uh, Pentax are actually really difficult to get a hold of, and they don't seem to be that concerned about dealing with people like myself. They're much more interested in dealing with um, retailers, uh, which I'm not sure how that's gonna work for them when it comes to marketing this camera. But I'd like to see it. Yes, I would very much like to see it. What do you think about Konica Hexar? Which one? Um, the RF or the AF? Uh, both good cameras. RF uh, has limitations in that it is very highly electronic and easy to break, but it's a nice camera. I liked it when I had one. 
The Contax AF is not a rangefinder camera, it's a compact camera that looks like one. It's got some real limitations because it's got F16 and 250th top speed, which is nothing. You know, so bright light, you're, a, you're screwed with a lot of those cameras. But it is very quiet. Um, unfortunately, they do have this issue where they just stop working and nobody can repair them. So I would exercise caution with the Konica Hexar. Right, um, if you've just joined us, and I'm seeing a lot of you just joined us, welcome. Thanks for joining. Ask me questions, ask me anything. Please tell me where you're from, what's going on. I always love to hear from you. I've been talking about the new Pentax camera. I've been talking about, uh, oh yes, we've got to talk about the new Mint camera because that looks like it's finally coming to fruition. I think we're actually going to see two new cameras on the market this year. How exciting is that? That's mad. You know, when we went for years and years and years and I was like one of the lone voices shouting into the void that we, you know, film is not there, we can keep on doing this. And now all of a sudden we've got two new film cameras coming in a year, that's mental. And we've got a whole bunch of new film coming out. Um, so that that's really good. Um, yeah, the the things are looking bright, things are looking rosy and I'm pretty happy about that, I'm pretty psyched. Should I buy an S3 2000? Yes. Great camera, absolutely fantastic camera. You can buy one from me if you want. <laughs> no, seriously though, if you do want to find a camera, if you are looking for a camera, I've got a ton of cameras for sale. Um, some really amazing ones like this. Look at that, just have a look at this, look at this. Look at that. Black M4, 50 year, chrome with a meter, stunner. I think this is one of the cleanest ones I have ever seen. But if I haven't got it, I've got lots of stuff on the site. So please do come and check the cameras for sale. If I haven't got that, I can always find something for you. Um, I can locate a camera for you. Just let me know, drop me an email and we can make the magic happen. Also, how are you on this day? I'm well, thanks, I'm well. Had a busy, busy, busy week. Uh, so today is the first day I've actually got to really sit down. Um, it's been a bit of a mental week. If you might not have noticed, if you are familiar with this channel, you may have noticed I've uh, lost my beard. It was just getting too fluffy. It was a bit too much. It was a bit too much. Jaden, what's up, Jaden? I'm waiting impatiently for my M6.85 to come back home from service. Hope it gets back before I go on a trip to Perth. Otherwise, the 3G will be on duty. Wouldn't be mad though. Yeah, because that 3G I got you is stunning. So I'm sure you'll be very happy with it. Hello from Hong Kong. Am I wrong in feeling that this city is always passed up in conversations about the best cities to photograph? Uh, no, no, well, yeah, yeah, in a way. I mean, it is possibly my favorite city to photograph. And a lot of very famous photographers came from there, including Fan Ho, you know? So um, I know a lot of people do this, but things have changed in Hong Kong. Um, things have changed and it's not a friendly a city as it was pre-COVID, um, it's uh, a lot more restricted now, I think, and it's lost a little bit of its energy, its anarchy, I think, because there was a certain amount of anarchy that went on with Hong Kong, it was just wild. Um, but yeah, it is still an amazing place to photograph. I wouldn't, I, and I would say to anybody, go there, eat the amazing food, dim sum until your, you know, comes out your ears and go and shoot the streets, so. What's up from NYC? Curious to hear about Ricard GR repairability. The display on my Perfect GR21 is starting to act funny. Now, there are repairs for this. I found out that there is a place in Taiwan that does it. It's on Facebook. You have to search for them on Facebook because they don't actually have a website. They just run it through a Facebook page. Um, but they do Rico, uh, Minolta, they do compact camera repair. And from what I understand, I've seen the work that they've done very good work, very reasonable prices. So go and have a look for them. Um, from what I understand, they're very, very good. Did you try any Foca HCR? Old photographer told me it's quite good. I have not, no, never tried it. Unfortunately, it's not one of the things we see very often. Hello from NYC, what's up NYC, I miss you. I miss NYC, I miss New York, I like New York. I was hanging out with a friend from New York the other day and it made me really, really want to go back. So I'm going to come. I'm going to come to New York as soon as I can. I, yeah, I've got to. Yeah. Um, Japan airport staff are the best. So polite about handshaking film. Yeah, seriously, they are the best. I've never had even so much as a grumble 
about checking it. In fact, they're always polite, happy, and, and often quite interested about what it is, you know. Uh, I've even had a couple of them that are photographers and have said to me, oh, nice film, nice film. So, yeah, you know. Uh, Hello from Bakersfield, California. What's up, Bakersfield? How's it going? Um, yeah, uh, Ray Collins. Good day, good day, Ray. It's good to see you, man. I hope you're well. Um, I always love your questions. Ray has the best questions, I swear. Howdy, Bellamy. Hey, Ashley's gaze. What's up? I hope you're well. Um, let's see. I saw an article on Champ Camera in Tokyo talking about the variety of interesting film stocks. Yes, I've been. Have you been there? I've been to Champ Camera quite a few times. Um, I don't go to their film store that much because it is kind of far away for me. Um, they don't do online sales, so you have to go in there physically and buy, and you can only buy like five rolls at a time or something. Most of their stuff, interestingly, is actually re-rolled. And they produce the canister labels themselves. There's a lot of re-rolled stuff in there. The, whether the veracity of how it's been stored and all of this sort of thing, I don't know. I couldn't really comment on that, but they do have a pretty impressive selection. Um, no problem, Hong Kong either recently. Oh, okay, good, good, that's good to know. Um, let's see, let's see. Any issues at airport with radioactive lenses? Not had any. I don't generally see a lot of Geiger counters around. That'll be the door. Right, hold on one second. I've got to go and get the door. Hi. Right. Okay, I'm back. That was the uh, that was the postman. Sorry about that. I'm back. I'm back. Here I am. Um, yeah, that was the post. Uh, just got another camera in the mail. So yay. Okay, let's see. Yeah, TSA kind of laughs at me when I ask for a handkerchief. TSA was so damn rude to me. They swabbed my cameras for explosives and made me miss my connecting flight. They also decided that it would be a good idea to um, take my trousers off. Yeah, yeah, just because I asked for my stuff to be hand-checked. Yeah, seriously, the um, airport staff at the TSA at Las Vegas are total dicks. So, you heard it from me. Yeah, dicks. Um, <laughs> you need to start getting your photo walks in New York. I'm going to do photo walks in New York, I swear to God. I am going to do them, I really need to. Do you have a recommendation for Leica M3 variant serial number? Um, not sure what you mean. Uh, what, what, where to buy one, where to get one. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not really sure where, where you're going with that one. Uh, opinion and experience on M3 or single stroke or double stroke? Well, I've had experience with both single stroke and double stroke. Um, personally, I prefer the single stroke. Uh, I know a lot of people prefer the double stroke. And there's the, um, you know, the older versions have their classic appeal and all of this. I like the single stroke. I don't own an M3 personally now. Um, I don't need to. I, uh, I've got enough cameras already. So, brilliant camera though. The viewfinder is fantastic. So, the only viewfinder I've seen which is probably better is this one actually, because it's got a one to one viewfinder for 50 mil. So, cannot find your store list for the Tokyo shops. Where do I go for this? It's on the website. Um, just uh, Tokyo Guide. It's actually on the front page of the website. JCH or just. Tokyo Guide, um, yeah. So, don't you? It, it's on the website. So, like, there's a picture of me pointing at some cameras um, on the front page. So that'd be it. You've got to make sure they sell out that Pentax. Damn straight, right? We have to. So, ah, good question. Nikon F3 Ti or Nikon F3P? Well, I've owned both, and I would say that the F3P is my favorite of all of the F3s. And the F3 is my favorite of all cameras, I think. I love it, I love it so much. So yeah, F3P, F3P every time. That thing is a beast, love it. Uh, F3P, because you get more metered shots. Yep, yeah, good answer. I can't imagine new film cameras would do well beyond the niche. Why not? I mean, that's exactly what they're trying to do. That's why they're making an accessible, cheaper film camera, which is 
uh, more appealing to a younger generation so that it's not just for a niche so that it appeals to a bigger market um, we have to break free of this sort of mindset that this is a niche you know and that's all of the that it will ever be when it can be more mainstream it doesn't have to be fully mainstream but it can be more mainstream so i think yeah we have to change the way we think about this what are your favorite low cost 35 millimeter film stocks relatively low cost there aren't any it's all so bloody expensive in japan um i like my street pan but it's not low cost really it is to me because i make it but um i like uh color plus and gold because they're cheap here relatively speaking um i also like uh fuji superior uh 400 and films like that they're, they're the cheap ones as it were as it goes um uh, cosmo photo and uh you know agent shadow and things like that i like those um because they're still relatively cheap as it goes you know <laughs> but then there's no such thing as cheap film in japan it's all ridiculous um what's the best part camera to bring to a party one that will get you all of the uh, tension from the uh the guys or the girls or whatever no um one that you feel comfortable shooting with and is capable it depends where the party is i mean if it's a birthday party in a restaurant you're going to need something with a flash and i mean i'd just take a compact camera for any of those situations i'd just take a compact camera with a decent flash on it um how can i use flash on a tlr i tried to find the answer for this question but can't seem to find got the first tlr months ago it's an aries reflect that i don't know actually um you're going to have to use a cold shoe or something i don't know about the aeros flex um, but yeah, you're going to have to use some kind of slave or something like that. Um, yeah, I'm afraid that's not my area, that one particularly. I'm not much of a TLR user anyway, and I've, I've never used a, an Ares Flex. Oh, Fabio Perlo, thank you for buying me a badge. I really appreciate that. Do I have to do the ice cream num 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 thing or something? <laughs> ice cream. Yeah, uh, <laughs> no, thanks for buying me a badge. I really appreciate it. Is it going to have changeable lenses? What, the uh, the Pentax, the new one? Um, no, the first one won't, the second one won't, the third one will. The third one will be an SLR, which will have changeable lenses. I suspect they're going to rely on legacy lenses um, because there's a huge amount of legacy Pentax lenses. So they will be able to use K-mount lenses. Um, oh, yes, yeah, yeah, old Kempmere flash. Oh, right, yeah, Kempmere flashes work with the Aeros Flex. That's a good one, thank you. This is why I love this community. This is why I love it because you guys each, each answer each other's questions as well and help each other out. Yeah, it's brilliant. Thank you so much. Uh, Fuji should take a lesson from Pentax. <laughs> Fuji's not going to take a lesson from anyone, but yes, they bloody well should. Uh, I don't think Fuji will ever let me through their doors after the things I've said about them. <laughs> uh, I'm looking forward to the new Pentax camera. It should be a lot of fun if it has flash yeah good point even if it doesn't have flash it doesn't really matter um it, it's just going to be a lot of fun where can i get a nikon fg20 repaired in tokyo you can't i don't know anywhere that will repair that camera at all at all um full stop i'm afraid sorry about that one um yeah good day bellamy yeah oh, purcell riley purcell how's it going mate um good day to you too thank you uh i have many rolls of old film unused is it worth putting them in the front is it uh sorry is it is, is putting them in the fridge now worth it yes yeah you might as well get them in there even if they haven't been stored in there before just get them in there um it can't hurt it's just going to stop them from degrading any further well slow the process anyway heading to Seoul in two weeks and i was planning to bring some 135 film nothing higher than iso 400 should be safe even if they scan as long as it's not a CT scan, yeah, you should be okay. Um, yeah, but they have a habit of just putting it through like three or four fucking times. So, you know, yeah, just be careful. Uh, so I assume I shouldn't bring my M6 to Korea. Oh no, bring your M6 to Korea, you know, take it to Korea. Just don't have any film in it when you do because they will open it. Yeah, thanks. Richard, look up Champ and they should fix it. Really? I did not know Champ would fix an FG. That's new on me. Um, 
Client may think it's obvious who the client was from Insta. <laughs> it wasn't a client, it's a mate. Um, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, you, you caught me out there. Yeah, I was hanging out with a uh, really, 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 really nice guy the other day. Really fun guy who's got so much positive energy and is just so cool. And not only that, absolutely loves cameras and is a deep nerd into them. We could have talked for, yeah, yeah, long time. He knew all about Mandel, he knew all about my tanny, you know, yeah. We deep dive with, with uh, Mark, he's a cool dude. And he will be back in Japan, so I'm gonna get him on here. I'm gonna get him on here and have him talk about cameras, that'd be sick. Anyway, I wish Froma would come out with a high speed bulk roll stock. Do any manufacturers do speedy stocks? No, I don't think they do, not anymore. I mean, supposedly all woe do, but good luck actually getting your film from them. Because, you know, you make an order and then you don't hear from them for a year. You know, so good luck with that. Um, question, my M6 or my marriage? Leaning towards my M6, it doesn't argue. Yeah, I'm pretty pretty down with that. Um, uh, though M6 can be quite cold and lacking in in intimacy. So you have to bear that in mind. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, it might not bear you any children either. <laughs> how, how much is, is an X-Pan if available? Very expensive, but I've got one for sale on my site now. I've got an X-Pan 2 set, full set, and it's about $9,000 um, for the X-Pan 2. Yeah, they are uh, very, very expensive, unfortunately. Oxy, what's up, man? How's it going? Um, long time no see. Um, yeah, so let's see, who else? Imagine littering. No, straight up, they do, I've seen them. But Japanese people do as well, so they're hypocrites they're there going all oh, these foreigners are littering and then you see them sitting outside a convenience store smoking chucking it on the floor having a pot noodle chucking that on the floor when there's a trash can like there right is it's infuriating but yeah the um the, the tourists have a habit of just leaving their shit everywhere so that's sort of never never great um yeah unfortunately hey there thoughts on the roll i 35s brilliant camera brilliant um I not really use one that much. Um, I know it has huge fans. The lens is incredible. It's zone focusing. It, it, it's not a range finder, so it does take a little bit of getting used to, and everything's sort of upside down and stuff. But um, yeah, very nice little camera. Hey Bellamy, do you think which do you, do you think film? Oh, hold on, it's so many questions. Oh my god. Um, do you think film cameras are making a comeback? Yes, I know Pentax released a new 35, also Alfie cameras released the half frame, Titch, which is great. Yes, Alfie cameras did. You've also got um, Roll Eye in conjunction with Mint. You've also got Silver Grain Classics who are working on their camera, which is gonna be a wide lux copy. You've also got Panomicron who are doing some kind of um, wide format 3D printed camera thing, which is something that could eventually make it into production. It's very exciting. Yes, they're making comeback. There is a lot, a lot going on. Most American tourists that go to Japan are fine, nerdy, not getting the Miami Beach party crowd. That is true. Um, a lot of the American, my only thing that I can say about American tourists is that they are quite loud. <laughs> uh, they are quite loud. No, but they're all super nice. Uh, the young American tourists I've had an issue with uh, playing music on trains and generally just being like loud and shouty and stuff and yeah I've actually with one of them I had to say you c can you stop can you turn your music off you can't do that here that's just not acceptable you know um, because they're used to doing whatever they want to do back home and you don't really do that here it's a different society hey Jess Hayes man what's up Bellamy miss Tokyo already yeah man miss having you here buddy um, you've got to come back again soon. I know you're coming back again soon, you know. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, if you're coming to Tokyo, um, check out my guides to Tokyo. There's always stuff to look up. If you want to take a tour with me, you can, um, as long as I'm available, because the schedule is hectic. Um, so you can always drop me a line through the website and we can arrange a tour. Um, I found quite a few Leica sellers here in Canada that seem to bring Leica stuff over from China and sell it here. Do they get cheaper stuff there? What's going on there? So what happened was about five to eight years ago, the Chinese sellers, uh, Chinese buyers started coming here en masse and buying everything, 
everything they could get their hands on because they had the money to do so, right? Took it all back to China and now they've started selling it to the rest of the world, the Chinese collectors. The economy's getting not so friendly over in China right now. It's getting a bit more difficult. So collectors are selling off their sets, some of them anyway. And you're seeing a lot of uh, rare items coming out of China. I know who the dealers are, I'm not gonna name any names. Um, but they all seem to go through Canada um, because of the connection with uh, you know, the Chinese community in Canada. I think there's uh, the Light Lens Labs guy, the rep, I know he lives in Canada. Um, I also know there's two fairly major dealers living in Canada. So yeah, that's where they're getting them stuff from. Um, yeah, uh, that's, at least that's what I understand. Um, yeah, and that way they can avoid uh, certain taxes and stuff. So downtown camera yeah shout out canada shout out canada thinking of buying contacts too what do you think great camera don't pay too much for it and do check it do do make sure if you can see it physically if you can check it physically do uh make sure the end uh the motors don't sound crunchy or the the low if don't you know if the lens stutters to get out or something or if it sounds slow um pass it up you know also, if the flash is burned, yeah, pass. Because it's gonna cost you a lot of money to get one of those repaired, a lot of money. Um, any ideas for stores in Tokyo where I can see MS Optics lenses in hand? There aren't many. Um, Lemon sometimes has some of his lenses. Lemon and Ginza. And uh, Map Camera sometimes has some of his lenses. Apart from that, I don't really know anywhere that actually stocks them. Um, a full range, at least. Nowhere can have a full range anyway, because there's, he's only got a few lenses available at the moment. Um, I've got a fairly good range, um, but they do sell out really quickly, so you have to be very, very fast on that. Um, yeah, which reminds me, I do have new stock of the Apple Qualia, the 28. 1.7, um, that's just arrived. We've got new stock of this absolutely fantastic, tiny, tiny, tiny lens. Um, I've got them in both silver and black. They're available on the site now. Don't miss out because it's limited stock. It, we only get it as they're made um, and they do sell out very fast. So if you want one, come and get one. Be quick, be quick, be quick. Uh, let's see. If we take away the fact that the FM3A was the last mechanical Nikon made, is it really worth the price difference between that and the FM2? Mm, um, yeah and no. Yes, because it is that much better. But at the same time, um, it's not that much better. And if it breaks, it's a lot harder to repair than an FM2 because of that fancy hybrid shutter. So um, yeah. Don't be like me who has a completely dead FM3 and a completely dead F5 and a completely dead F6. Both of these are fancy door stops. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so don't be like me. Uh, <laughs> I've got dead cameras just, <laughs> there's a graveyard in this in office. Um, ah, goodness me. Right, have you heard of Koa 66 having reflection in camera that shows up on the negative? I haven't heard that before, that's a new one on me. I did not know that. Um, I've never shot with a Koa 66. I rarely see them here. There is one in Lemon. There's one in Lemon in Shinjuku at the moment. Yeah, that's the only one I've seen for ages. Uh, is a Hasselblad 205 FCC worth buying nowadays? Do you know if it's repairable? I personally would steer clear of it. Very hard to repair. Um, I don't sell them. I don't want to sell them. Have you tried flick film yet? Any opinions? I haven't tried flick film. No, I haven't. Um, I should have a look. Hello, JCH. Is delayed shutter a common issue on F1 new? Yes, it is fairly common and I believe it can be repaired um, if you have a decent repair place. So you might want to have a look at that. Um, let's see. Oh, there's so many. Thank you so much for all of these questions. I really appreciate it. I love doing this. So. Hello from San Francisco, just got a roller cord Art Deco. Quite clean, but some green tarnish on the nickel. Forms are suggesting to remove it with lighter fluid or toothpaste. Any thoughts? <sighs> yeah, so that's the, um, 
But what you're looking at there is the, the patina, the verdigris from the uh, from the bronze in the, the camera, or the brass in the camera, bronze. Um, so, yes, you can remove it. Personally, I would leave it because it's part of the camera. If it's not affecting the way that the camera is being used, then I would leave it on the camera because it shows its life, I guess. But if you do want to clean it off, yes, um, light fluid or toothpaste would work. Um, be very gentle, be very gentle. Um, a lot of Q-tips. My Olympus Stylus Epic stopped working, tried a new battery and it's still no luck. Is this repairable? Don't think so. I don't know anywhere that does those. Well, may maybe that place in Taiwan does them, but I couldn't be certain, so. Tokyo, yes, Tokyo. This is Tokyo. We're in Tokyo. I'm in Japan, this is Tokyo, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Hi from Melbourne, thinking of buying the Contax T2, what do you think? I think I just answered this one a little while ago. Yes, great camera, just make sure you can check it. Or if you can't check it, make sure you buy it from a reputable seller like me. <laughs> uh, Hong Kong, okay, Hong Kong, yep, Hong Kong, love Hong Kong. Wait, you can repair GR21s? No, I can't repair GR21s. A place in Taiwan can repair GR21s. So you want to go and find them on Facebook. I don't know their name, sorry because it's all in, it's all in Cantonese um, or, or Mandarin. But um, yeah, you need to find them on there. Uh, what's a record repair place called? Yeah, I don't know. I'm sorry, I don't know. You're just going to have to find them. Or look for uh, compact camera repair uh, or something like that. You'll find a time and you'll eventually find a time on his Facebook page. So and they apparently are very, very good. So yeah. <laughs> Live unboxing, come on Bellamy, I haven't got anything to unbox, man. Okay, unless I unbox myself. No, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not that desperate, Jesus. Um, flying to Japan in a couple of weeks, got any camera store suggestions? Yes, go and check my website. There is a guide to the stores in Tokyo. It's on the front page. There's tons and tons. I can't go through them all. I would love to with you, but I just can't. TSA bomb swab to my six month old baby in Texas. What the fuck? <laughs> what? So, oh. Wow, wow, man, um, that's unreal. Sorry to hear that. I hope your baby was okay. Uh, and not a bomb, though you could maybe class your baby's, you know, diaper as hazardous, biohazard or something. <laughs> I know my kids were. Any camera shops you recommend with Tokyo with good selection of Olympus OM Zuko glass? There is nowhere that has a good selection of OM glass now. Now that the OM glass has been used in some big movies, that it, it just disappears off the shelves as soon as it gets there. So you've just got to hunt. You've got to hit every store looking for that stuff, I'm afraid. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Nikon FA might be better than the F3 underrated camera. Boop, boop. No, I don't think so anyway. You're entitled to your opinion, but I'm entitled to say I think it's wrong. <laughs> Why not Vision 3? Seems there's a good amount of places developing ECN2 in Japan. No, there's not. There's nowhere. There's not anywhere. I've not found anywhere developing ECN2 in Japan. Like, nowhere. I, I, if I want to shoot ECN2, I have to send it out to, um, to Hong Kong. The, like, where? Um, if you know of somewhere that's developing ECN2 in Japan, please tell me. I would love to know, because I've got a bunch of it in my fridge. Um, let's see, let's see. Uh, hello, hello. Welcome to you who have just joined. It's nice to see you. What's the best what What's the best why, what's the best M and why is it the M2? <laughs> Cuz it's the best one. No, it really is. It's but I, I don't know. Yeah, it probably is, isn't it, really? <laughs> what's the name of the Taiwan repair shop in Taiwan? I don't know. I don't know its actual name. I just know that it's a page on Facebook. Um uh, You'll find it. Trust me, you'll find it. You go to any of the camera repair groups. You'll you'll find it eventually. Even modern Pentax Digital still uses K mount. Exactly, exactly. So that's going to be another really good thing. K mount is going to be really easy to swap. Have you ever seen user Tom Abramson rep rapid winder and how so does it compare to the like of it? Not only have I seen and used one, I've met Tom and talked awful lot about it and how he developed it. Um, he was a lovely guy. May he rest in peace. I do miss him. Um, 
he was one of the people that really encouraged me to do JCH and for that I have an eternal respect for him and his knowledge. Um, the Rapid Winder is far, far superior to the uh, like of it, I would say, far. It, it, it's so much better. It's so much better engineered. Um, I actually very, very much want one for myself, but I haven't been able to find one. Had the chance to get one when he was alive and I didn't have enough money at the time because you know I hadn't really been doing this for very long. And then when he passed, the prices of them went through the roof and to find a black paint one for my MP now is proving to be a bit of a task, so. Um, but yes, very good, very, very good. Forever asked about high speed bulk roll for cheap. Use Kemp 400 pushes good to pushes up to 32. That's good to know. Good to know. How do you and Mark Rebel go about meeting? Hello from Texas, uh, Dallas, Texas. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, just through uh, photography online and um, having similar interests, you know, uh, I think we know uh, some, uh, you know, familiar people. And uh, yeah, I think we got in touch through Instagram with each other and talked about cameras and that was it, you know. Um, he's a really good dude. He's a really nice guy. He's, he's a lot of fun and he knows his cameras. He knows his photography. Um, yeah, yeah. So he, uh, I hope to see him again soon. He's, I hope he's gonna come back to Japan soon. And if he does, I really hope we can get him on here to have a chat about cameras because he's just so much fun. Um, do you know anywhere in the States that surfaces Hasselblad x -pans? No, I don't. You're going to have to go to Les Victor in France for that, um, I'm afraid. The Asher T4 worth the hype? Yeah, the lens is worth the hype, but the price makes it not worth the hype, unfortunately. Favourite point-and-shoot camera ever? Ever, 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 ever? Ricoh GR1 Vivid 3 probably. Or, yeah, yeah, ever. But I'm not going to use one again because I can't afford one, um, and I'm scared of it breaking. So my second favorite is this, the Konaka Gemba Kantoku, which is brilliant. Um, love that thing. Um, I advise anybody to get one. Uh, a lot of influencers and YouTubers taking the piss. Yes, you are not wrong. You are not wrong there. They are, I try not to. I tried to take the piss out of them, but <laughs> yeah, it doesn't always work. It doesn't always work. Uh, got one of the new waist level. <laughs> Find a bubble cold chew gizmos on the way from Dumu. They're making some cool accessories these days. Yes, they are. In fact, um, uh, another place that's making some cool accessories is Kex. And they just sent me their newest little tiny weeny, 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 weeny little light meters. So um, I'm gonna have a crack with these and see what they're like and give you guys some feedback. These things are absolutely minute. Um, so yes, uh, very, very, very interesting. I'm looking forward to playing with that. Um, can I source a 35 Corn V4 from you guys? Yes, you can. Drop me a line, I can make sure it happens. Um, send me an email. Please don't DM me. I get so many DMs, I just get lost. I can't reply to them all. Um, I really appreciate everybody's DMs, but if you actually want to get something from the site, if you want a camera, if you want a proper answer, send me an email through the website. You will always get an answer from me. I always answer my emails. So uh, let's see, let's see. What do you think about TTR sound lessons and 7 Art and same company, are the same company, do you know? I don't think they are the same company, no. Um, I've not really used that many of their lenses. I've seen them, um, from what I understand, they're very good value, but, that's all I know, really. So I, I tried to get some lenses for testing from them, and they said, yeah, and then they never got back to me. I'm shocked you keep dead cameras. I, yeah, I do. What else am I going to do with them? Somebody's got to look after them. I feel sorry for them. Is that a downtown camera hat? You're damn right it is. Good eye there. Yeah, they also sent me some other cool stuff, but I can't. I've got t-shirts and all sorts of things, and I've got a tote bag and things like that. Thanks downtown, love you guys, love you Claudia, thank you. Um, yeah, F100 is way to go in 2024. Yeah, F100's sick, it's still a great camera. Um, thanks Bellamy, you're welcome, you're welcome. What light meter do you recommend? Hard to say, because I don't really use that many often, because I've already got light meter in most of my cameras, but I have got several options. I've got the Voigtlander VC2, I've got the Kex KMO2, I've got the Dolmo made Brass D, um, 
I like this one. I like the, the D meter. I, I, I really um, uh, like that one. And I got this new Kex one, which is teeny, itsy bitty, teeny weeny, tiny uh, thing. And I'm going to give that a try. I think that would be um, very interesting. So I'm looking forward to trying that out. Um, yeah. Uh, have any, I have a shutter error 888 on my X-Pen. Do you know a place stateside that repairs them? No, I don't know anywhere in the US that repairs uh, uh, Hasselblad X-Pens. You are going to have to contact uh, Les Victor in Paris. Um, for a repair for that. That's the only place currently I know of that is repairing x -Pan. So, yeah, sorry, I can't be more help on that one. Uh, wow, there's so many questions this time around. It's amazing. This is brilliant. Thank you so much, guys. Why is it that cameras like the F4, F5, F6 are always spoken about as being the most indestructible cameras and yet are also vulnerable? Any camera is vulnerable to becoming a doorstop. You know, this F6 is dead because it somebody dropped it real hard. Um, I think it came maybe came off a moving vehicle or something because it's cracked the whole top plate and apparently it's it's damaged all of the internal boards and they cannot be replaced, which sucks. And this F5 should, in theory, work. Unfortunately, the previous owner left the batteries in there for a number of years and caused them all to fuzz up and it's now not, it, it, it won't take power and I can't get anywhere to repair it. So that's the end of that one, which is a shame because that's in beautiful condition. It just doesn't work. Um, but that's what happens, you know, no camera is indestructible, none. Uh, recommended place to develop film in Tokyo for a tourist. Ueno photo in Shibuya, Ozawa in Ebisu, or if you're just doing color film and you need it quick, Kitamura, Koide, Yodabashi, Bit Camera, all of those places will do it quick. I recommend Kitamura Camera because they'll do it on site. Um, let's see, let's see. Sorry, Bellamy, for asking the risk code question. Ah, that's all right. <laughs> Have you seen Dune 2 yet? No, it's not here yet. No, it's not here yet. I wish. I'd love to. Uh, if uh, Conic uh, Big Mini is repairable. Um, no, not as far as I know. If your life was a novel, what would it be? What would the title be? Ray Collins. Um, Jack of all trades, master of none, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good one. Thanks. Uh, I really appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Monogram Asia, I haven't seen you guys for a long time. Thank you for taking the time. Have a great day. Enjoy your weekend. I will do. Where's Mark? Mark is in a helicopter today. Yeah, yeah he's, uh, he's off touring the city So because um, it's his last day. So um, he's off doing cool stuff. Um, Fujifilm GA645, yes, it's a good camera. Is there a good and affordable M LTM five centimeter pancake? No, don't think there is. Don't think there is a, even is a uh, you know, 50 mil or five centimeter pancake. Um, not as far as I'm aware. Uh, currently got a few thunderstorms rolling through our area. So the Nikonos, 2, Nikonos 3 is getting a workout. Good choice, yeah. Um, that's why I took the Konica Gemba out with Mark the other day and he had a Nikonos 5 because it was raining and it was just a bit crappy. So what's a Leica box all about? Which one? Got loads of Leica boxes. What, which one? Which one? That one? That's an MA behind me. Um, that's for sale. Um, M6, that's for sale. Um, let's see. This, Leica case. Yeah, uh, yeah, I've got lots of Leicas for sale if you want. Um, Come and check me out, you know. Uh, the TR 50.95 looks nuts. Would need to fit well with my Hue Mag Finder M6. Hi, Mag Finder M6. Hopefully I can resist the need for speed. I, I just don't care about those speed lenses anymore. I, I, I find them almost unusable. I never really liked Noctilux. It was never my thing. Uh, I tried all of them, every version, and never really got on with it. So yeah, yeah. I have no need for hyper fast lenses myself. So. Uh, for all of those asking, the renowned camera place in Taiwan is called Gaosheng Camera Repair Company. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's, um, yeah, Gaosheng Camera Repair Company, everybody. Check them out. Um, thank you so much for that. Really appreciate it. How do 35 Summerons compare to Summicrons? Well, they're a bit slower, but they have beautiful rendering. I would say that the rendering on the Summeron is actually nicer than the rendering on a Summicron. Uh, and that's because the Summicron can often be a bit too sharp. 
or too clinical. Um, the Sumeron's got uh, uh, a Leica glow, you know, uh, love the Sumeron. So, uh, just had roll developed in Kitamura like two hours. Yeah, they are really fast. Can a Model 7 or Leica M6? Leica M6. Yeah, Leica M6 every time. Um, I'm going to Japan in a couple of months. Do you recommend taking all the film I want to shoot or should I buy it there? Bring film with you because the film here is really expensive. It's going to cost you a lot more. Simple. Uh, <laughs> wishful thinking, but somebody needs to make a new bu a commercial C41 lab. I work at the shop in Buffalo and we're limping along repairing ancient equipment. Yes, everybody's repairing ancient equipment. Um, and that's, that is an issue um, which hopefully will be addressed. Uh, it just needs people to actually address it. So... I am running out of time. It's um, crikey. We've been doing this for over an hour now. This has been fantastic. I've had a great time talking to all of you guys and girls and lovely people. Uh, there's a Russian LTM50 that are compact and cheap, but you get what you pay for. Yeah, true. Russian lenses. But they did just use Russian lenses in the new June movie. So, in fact, I know the guy who supplied the lenses. But... Um, so yeah that's it for today i think i'm gonna have to go i've got lots to do uh, people have bought stuff and they want me to ship it so i've got to get on with that if you want a camera if you want a lens if you want anything like that come and hit me up come and check out the website we've got loads for sale i've got so many amazing cameras this is going to be up for sale later uh, probably today um i also got lots of more i wanted to also mention uh bowman these bowman leather straps um, which I've just tried out and I think are rather nice. I'm going to try and do a bit more of an in-depth thing on them in the coming days, but check out Bowman uh, leather straps. Uh, they look very nice indeed. This one's lovely, it smells really nice. I've also got uh, another range of straps coming, which we're gonna start selling on the site quite soon. Um, and there's also this, the square hood for Leicas, which I'm also gonna try and do a review for, hopefully soon, it's really busy. I'm also writing my book, which I hope you guys buy. Um, it's about film cameras, so that's gonna come sometime, um, <laughs> sometime soon. Um, everything's so busy. Um, please go to the website and also go and buy some merch. Go and buy, you know, um, a hoodie or a t-shirt. Check out the link tree in the bio. It's all there. Thank you, every single one of you. Thank you for all of these questions. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening to me drone on. I really appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you all again next time. Stay happy, stay cool and be cool to one another and keep on shooting film. Take care.